Everyone knows the story of the 16-bit console wars. It was blast processing in the blue blur versus Mode 7 and Mario. We all know how the war ended, with Nintendo emerging victorious only to be toppled from their perch in the years to come, but all that's ancient history now. Even more ancient is the opening shot in that console war, the release of the Sega Master System, Sega's 8-bit competitor to the NES. When the Master System released in 1985, it was superior to the NES in almost every way. It had better graphics and better sound than Nintendo's console, but it just didn't have the games to back that power up, and as a result, the NES would dominate the world on the strength of its library. Sega wasn't about to give up on its 8-bit powerhouse, though. In late 1987, they released a game that was years ahead of its time. That game was Fantasy Star. Hearing the name Fantasy Star these days conjures images of online multiplayer, but the series actually started out as a turn-based RPG. In fact, Fantasy Star was originally released to be Sega's answer to the Dragon Quest series, but rather than relying on the tried-and-true fantasy setting that so many RPGs of the day were using, Fantasy Star added a little bit of sci-fi to the mix. Your adventure begins in a world of capsule houses and spaceships, but as you explore you'll find castles and monsters, you'll wield swords and cast spells, but you'll also travel between planets and get advanced tech like hovercrafts and land rovers. This game is unlike anything that released around its time. The enemy encounters are stunning, featuring large sprites and animated backdrops. Sure, these things sound commonplace or even mundane by today's standards, but they were jaw-dropping back in the late 80s. It wasn't just the Master System's superior hardware that made this possible, either. A lot of it came down to the talent behind the game. You may have heard of Fantasy Star's lead programmer before, a then-young man named Yuji Naka. Naka's programming feats were so impressive that even 31 years later, the team responsible for porting the game to the Switch couldn't fully figure out some of the compression algorithms used to get the game working on the original hardware. Despite the minor difficulty they had, M2 managed not only to put together a near-perfect port, but they also threw in some much-needed improvements. The fact that they were able to do that shouldn't be much of a surprise, considering Fantasy Star has been ported to a ton of consoles over the years, including the GameCube and Game Boy Advance. But there's some new stuff in the Switch version that hasn't been done before. For the first time, you can emulate the Mark III's FM sound unit with the English version of the game. Just like the NES was called the Famicom in Japan, the Master System was called the Mark III overseas. When the system was brought stateside, the FM sound unit was left behind, dramatically altering Fantasy Star's sound. Here's how the title theme sounds without the FM sound turned on. And here's how it sounds when you turn it on. Before now, if you wanted to hear the objectively superior sounds of the Japanese console, you needed to play the Japanese language version of the game, even in the re-releases. But now, you can mix and match to your heart's content. I can't deny that the FM sound is better, but I found myself sticking to what I know and turning it off. I grew up with the downgraded audio, and the game just seems wrong to me somehow without it. The team at M2 also added in an auto-mapping function. If you've ever played Fantasy Star, you're no doubt familiar with how confounding the dungeons can be. Impressive as 3D dungeons may have been in the 80s, they all looked pretty much the same. Endless brick walls with the same pattern occasionally broken up by a door or trap. The lack of variation in the backdrops made it difficult to figure out where you were and where you've been. As you progress through the dungeons, the map will fill itself out, and it'll even helpfully show you where you can find treasure, where traps are, and even where false walls are. It's a simple change that makes a massive difference. It's amazing that after three decades, this was finally added. Even after playing the game numerous times across different systems, I had problems making my way through without some kind of homemade map. There's also a new monster gallery, which will let you scroll through information about the various monsters. It's a cool addition, but it doesn't do much for me. I like the monster designs, but like most games with limited memory, Fantasy Star's variety is largely built on palette swaps. There's a full sound player as well, and a list of weapons, items, and armor, all of which come in handy considering it's hard to find information on stats for these items in the actual game. This latest port has inherited some of the improvements that were made for other versions too. The Switch version has a new mode dubbed Ages. 
Ages Mode incorporates all of the changes made to previous Fantasy Star remakes, such as increased experience and money while decreasing the number of random encounters. You can also optionally increase your walk speed. I didn't think I'd like all these changes layered on top of the traditional Fantasy Star experience I know and love, but in practice they made the game feel fresh. After playing in Ages Mode, I'm not sure I could go back to the original. Speaking of the original, most of Fantasy Star remains the same. In its day, that was spectacular, but with a few decades behind it, not all of it has aged well. NPC dialogue is bare bones, and the quality of the translation is scattershot. Oftentimes, the game leaves you with little clue on where to go or what to do. If you talk to everyone, you can sometimes get hints on what you should do, but there are moments where all but the most astute players will feel lost. Inventory management is cumbersome, and the menus aren't the greatest to navigate. Text spaces are limited, meaning most item names are oddly abbreviated or truncated, and selling stuff at a secondhand store is often more painful than just dumping it. Speaking of stores, endgame gear is scattered all over the world, meaning you'll need to remember where, say, the diamond armor is, and come back to it much later when you can actually afford it. I also didn't enjoy the save state function included in this release, as it created a save state every time I paused the game. I found myself unintentionally creating them when I'd want to take a break, rather than when I needed them. As a result, I abandoned the feature early and used the game's built-in save system that was a holdover from the original instead. I would have loved to have seen the option to play the PS2 version of Fantasy Star included in this package, as that version had completely reworked art and was never released in the States, but it seems that may have been a bit too much to ask. Regardless, Fantasy Star stands as the prettiest 8-bit game of all time and the best showcase of the Master System's potential. It overcomes the issues with its mechanics through its dazzling presentation, stellar soundtrack, and riveting story. Reliving Alice's quest to avenge her brother's death is even more fun now on the Switch than it was on the Master System as a kid. I like it a lot. If you've never played, or if you've beaten this game a million times like I have, you're going to find something to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching, and make sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more reviews just like this one.